Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I am Anisha Gupta. Well, we have seen a lot of movement come in case of commodity markets, the uncertainty in the equity markets. Amongst the looming recession concerns has every investor in search for a safe haven. The commodity markets have proven to be one such haven, with crude oil and gold giving much higher returns than the traditional equities in the Indian market. So is it time for you to switch your focus to the commodities market? To take this discussion forward, I am now joined by NS Ramaswamy, who is Head of Commodities at Ventura Securities, Anuj Gupta is VP Research at IFL Securities. I also have with me Ajay Kedia, who is Director at Kedia Advisors, and Pritam Patnaik is Head of Commodities at Axis Securities. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Very happy festivities to you. And if you look at the last one, somewhat or last one year, we have seen uh, commodities give better return than equities. Of course, it has been a very volatile year. We've seen all-time highs and multi-year highs. And from then, there is a lot of correction. Is this the right time to start putting commodities into your portfolios? Is this the right time to start accumulating it? Is the question that I'm going to put across to all of you. And I'll start with gold and silver prices first because when you look at the last one year, in the dollar terms, we may have seen a decline. But in rupee terms, euro, Japanese yen, Turkish lira, you look at all of the currencies, we have seen very strong returns come in for gold and silver both. Pritam, I'll start with you. If uh, you were to include gold in your portfolio, what kind of returns can investors then expect? See, Manisha, I am fairly confident that uh, the coming year is going to be the year for the gold and silver. <clears throat> Primarily, there are two factors that has been governing prices. One was the interest rate hikes that's been happening continuously across all large central banks. And the other is the dollar index. Unfortunately, these are not mutually exclusive. They're actually inclusive. And the way I look at it, uh, some of the noise has been now factored in. After the 2nd November event for the Fed, I sense that the lag effect of raising high rates is going to come and show the economic performance of all large economies. And that's going to hold back the hand of all the central banks. And then you could see softening in the interest rates heights. And that would be the trigger for gold and silver. My sense in gold is that I won't be surprised to see levels of 55,000 to 56,000 by the end of the next year. And in the case of silver, I'm a little more bullish at about 67,000 levels. All right. So 55, 56,000 rupees as well in case of gold. That would be not too far away from all time highs that the gold prices have seen. Ajay, how would you look at the gold prices? How much of a portfolio should be in case of gold and what kind of gains are you expecting? Very good afternoon, Mishaji, and uh, happy Diwali to everyone. Uh, definitely, gold and silver was slightly underestimated uh, in 2022. I will just recall 2008 also because at that same time, we have seen global financial crisis. At that time also, we have seen gold and silver both were underrated uh, and uh, almost for eight to nine months, they were underperforming. But since October 2008 to April 2011, we have seen a fabulous rally in gold and silver where gold made a high of almost 1920, which we know today also. Similar kind of uh, momentum we are expecting uh, since October uh, have been started already. We have seen prices have rallied from 1620 to almost 1720 and see back on the expectation that in November also there will be another rate hike. As become likely uh, to that already things have been uh, uh, absorbed in the market. And the conditions like uh, geopolitical tension, recession, fear, inflation concerns, equity market is slightly, uh, we can say, overheated. So all these factors makes gold more attractive. Even in China and uh, Turkey, we have already seen premiums have started moving on a higher side. So we see uh, gold uh, in near term, or let's say if we keep our view for next one year, one year period. Here on domestic side, definitely physical demand and rupee weakness will add some more uh, additional gains what we have already seen uh, from last Diwali to till now. So we are expecting around 56,000 on uh, domestic side, whereas in international prices can go uh, easily can uh, cross 1850 to 1900 level uh, once again. All right, so much more gains expected from here on. Pritam, if you had to choose between gold and silver, which one would that be? Because gold, yes, and if you look at the Danteras numbers as well, I mean, these are still early days because I do understand that various federations and associations are still trying to get those numbers in. But the initial ones, that the quote that I have from Ibja says that 
from last year, if you compare it, it's 30% higher in sense of physical buying in case of gold. Metal Focus tells us that the silver imports into India this year are at record highs. 8,000 tons is what we are anticipating. So clearly, even as the speculative or investment buying may not have been so strong, the physical buying clearly has been pretty on the higher side. So if you had to choose between gold and silver, what side you bend slightly more at? Bend towards more towards silver. Uh, okay. Primarily being because I think it's a year of bullion, and that's also come back here for metals. And considering that silver would follow either of the um, two commodities, I sense, and I would put my bet on silver. Okay, and you have a very bad throat. Clearly, you've been partying a lot during this Diwali. Mr. Ramaswamy, since we are talking silver here and it is all about metals and the industrial demand is expected to pick up as we go forward, how much would you bet your money on silver? What are your expectations? What are the fundamentals you're looking at and what prices are you watching? I would be looking out for whatever Pritam said about silver. I would be more focusing <laughs> on the base metal, the doctor, the, the copper, would be okay. one which will really uh, shine throughout the 22 year uh, and at least uh, for the short term. So uh, although silver, I, I vouch for whatever Pritam has said, I would uh, add on to that is the industrial metal or the copper because the way mm -hmm. the LME and the Shanghai inventories are dropping and uh, the way the the way the ICESG is talking about the deficit of close to 3,25,000 tons in copper. And uh, that sort of uh, uh, number, which is giving an inventory for a global consumption close to around 4.9 days. Uh, and by year end, it is likely to be even 2.7 days. So looking at copper, I feel copper could be a sure short bet with the current LME price uh, hovering at around $7,400, $7,500 in LME. We could expect it to again uh, go back uh, or rally up to around close to $8,500. All right. And uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, would you say that among the base metal prices, among the industrial metals, the most bullish perhaps are copper fundamentals? Absolutely, copper fundamental because the green energy transition is also sure. expected to pick up on the demand. That is one major, major uh, count for it. And uh, it's although it is well supplied today, but it's all of lower grades. There is a lot of underinvestment in the projects. So mm. if uh, any new investment in the projects were to come up, uh, if that is the reason it's not come up. So then there is a shortage in the, uh, for the short term period, at least there is a shortage. So that, that could be the, the major trigger, which uh, we feel copper should again rally for the short term. Although US recession fear for 2023 and the global uh, or the ICSG trying to talk of a surplus in copper in the year 2023 would take away the shine of 2022 and 23 could be a lackluster for copper. But yes, now for the short term, copper is still bullish. Okay. So we're buying gold, we're buying silver, we're buying copper as well. Anuj, what is your sense uh, between precious metals and base metals? Where are you putting your money in? And what are your targets going forward in the next 3 to 6 to 12 months now? Uh, Manisha ji, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, very warm wishes for the happy Diwali and new Samvat. And uh, uh, if we check this year from starting to till date, we have... Uh, saying that this year was very hawkish in terms of federal state federal bank statement they are continuously increasing interest rate and uh, all major central banks also looking towards the increased interest rate and after that we have seen a correction in uh, uh, gold silver and in uh, you know in the uh, other commodity also in the base metal also but right now we have seen that uh, federal bank is now going on a lighter mode they are uh, expecting and they are saying that they will increase interest rate in a slower mode so this uh, might be a you know uh, a u turn uh, for the commodities but still uh, we have seen some uh, disruption in china in terms of uh, you know uh, covid issues and still we have seen a data uh, from the us uh, and even china there is little bit not uh, you know uh, as per the uh, remarkable so i think uh, uh, for a very short term perspective market may be on a you know sideways trend but yes definitely as federal bank is going to increase it by slower mode and uh, other economies also increase uh, the interest rate. So that will be impact on the dollar and dollar might be uh, go down or maybe are consolidated on higher levels. But still there is a room to increase uh, for the other, uh, you know, international con con international currencies like GBP and Euro. So this will impact sure. the positive for the uh, commodity. So my view is if we uh, talk for the longer term perspective or uh, let's say for three to six months, I'm very optimistic for uh, gold, crude and copper because uh, these are the commodity which are totally driven by the demand. And uh, I am expecting that demand will increase whenever the economies will come out with uh, from the slowdown and uh, uh, equity market will increase. And uh, slowly, slowly, we have seen some in industrial progress may be seen in the economy. So this will impact 
on a uh, industrial metal side so i am very optimistic for gold crude and copper uh, and we are expecting in next 6 month gold may test 53000 to 54000 let's say in dollar terms at 1750 dollar per ounce and uh, crude definitely uh, still there is a momentum between the us and opec members us is saying that they will uh, uh, they will uh, you know uh, increase production and they will release more uh, from their uh, you know reserves but in on another side opec member are saying that they will increase uh, they will cut down the production so that is a you know doldrum between us and sure. opec so i think i think uh, market will uh, uh, um, moving between a range of 80 dollar to 100 dollar but still okay. the demand concern is that i am very optimistic that uh, crude will increase from here to 100 dollar and yes copper is a industrial metal so i think that is also increase and uh, my target on mcx would be for 6 month is 700 and on if we talk about the lme definitely i am expecting a positive trend in the lme all right so it's good going in commodities and these are good accumulating levels as well and we are looking at some positive cues really seeping in case of commodities here and yes the china point is well taken because yes the kind of uh, leadership shuffle that we have seen in china the zero covid policy uh, a very divergent view in sense of monetary policy all of that seems to be impacting commodities given the sense that china is a powerhouse and nearly 40 to 50% of all commodities are either produced or consumed in china so that's going to be a wild card looking forward but with that we'll go for a short break when we come back we'll We'll talk about energy space in detail. We'll also touch base in case of commodity markets in sense of agriculture on what are the topics here with our experts.